Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Richard with Productive AI, and we have the next video in our series where we finally add some AI applications. And the AI applications we're gonna add are Open Web UI, that's gonna be our front end, and Olama is a back end for running local LLMs. That's optional, but I'm gonna set it up in this video anyway. If you have an NVIDIA GPU, it's gonna work great. If not, you can skip it. It's not necessary, but it's really cool, and I highly recommend you try it if you have an NVIDIA GPU. All right, let's get started. So one of the first things we did in our last lesson was we installed Ubuntu in WSL2. So what I recommend is that we pin it to our taskbar so that it's really easy to launch, okay? All right, I got it right here. Now let's start installing our next app. So if you follow the instructions on my website for this video, the first thing we're gonna do is install the prerequisites for Olama. And that's again, if you have an NVIDIA GPU, I have an NVIDIA GPU in my setup, let's go ahead and do it. If you don't have an NVIDIA GPU, that's okay. You can skip this. Otherwise, let's go ahead and get started. And like I did on the last video, I'm just gonna copy and paste the commands as they're shown in the instructions. Okay. So we need to install NVIDIA Toolkit. That's what we're doing right now. And you can see it's really big. So it's installing a bunch of stuff right now. Okay, we're done. That took a solid 10, 15 minutes to finish. There's just a lot of stuff that it has to install to get the toolkit running, but we're good. We now have NVIDIA toolkit 12.5 installed. Now we have to install the container toolkit and that is required to get the GPU to pass through inside of our Docker containers. So let's go ahead and install that. Again, following the instructions on the website, I'm just gonna copy and paste the commands. So the first thing we do is add the repository. And then we update so that the repository is there and we're gonna install the toolkit. This goes a lot faster. Not nearly as big, there it is, it's done. Now we're gonna restart Docker to use that toolkit. Yep, now it's just saying to restart Docker. Docker's restarted, okay. Now we are ready to finally install Llama and open Web UI. let's do it. Awesome. Now here we are inside a container and we are going to install Olama and open web UI using a stack. And we're going to see why this is helpful. Just follow along with me. I promise you it's all going to make sense once we start getting into it. So let's add a new stack. We'll call this one AI, just give it a generic name. We're going to use the web editor. So you can see what Pertainer is telling us here is that we can define or paste our Docker Compose content here. So this is literally the same as having a Docker Compose file, which we created in the first lesson. And I have a Docker Compose file that I can copy from my website. So I'm just gonna copy and paste it here. It's all there. And then we're gonna deploy the stack. And then deployment is in progress. It might take a little bit, so I'll let this finish and then come back when it's done. Okay, now that took a solid 10 minutes or so to deploy. So if you're just seeing waiting to deploy, just be patient, it will eventually finish. And it did in my case, here it is, it's created. You can see we have total control, that's nice. If I click it, you can see our containers running. Open Web UI is trying to start right now. If I click this log file, I can see what it's doing. And it's actually doing its initial setup here, which is interesting. That's probably why it's still on starting. Olama is good to go. And you can see what's important here is that we got CUDA and it's seeing my GPU, that's important. All that work we did at the beginning to set it up, the fact that it can see my GPU, that's awesome. That means that we have our Olama set up correctly. So you just need to wait for Open Web UI to finish and it's done, it says it's healthy and it's running. All right, now let's go in to Open Web UI and let's get it configured. So now that we have Open Web UI installed and it's running as we verified inside of Portainer, you navigate to localhost 3000. Again, this is all on my website, and this is what you are initially greeted with. So we're gonna go ahead and get started, and I'm gonna enter my information. And create an admin account. All right, we are in. So Olama and OpenWebUI are good. Let's just confirm that everything is set up and let's set up an API key so this thing can actually interact with OpenAI models. It should already be able to interact with Olama, but let's go make sure. Now it's important that we go to the admin settings and not just the user settings. If we were to go to the connections here, this would just be for the individual user. 
Let's go to admin settings, is that's going to get us to the global settings. And we want to go to connections here, and it's looking for an API key. If you don't have an API key yet, I explain and I show on my website how to get an API key. Otherwise, go ahead and enter your API key. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste mine in. And that's it. And what I can do is I can hit configure and I can verify the connection and the connection is good. Now for Olama, we already set that up when we were configuring our Docker container and we can configure that and verify the connection here and the connection is verified. There's nothing else we have to do. We've confirmed that our OpenAI connection works. We confirmed that our Olama connection works. Just hit save. And now we can go to a new chat and immediately we already see a drop down with all of our GPT models. So obviously if you see all that, then you know that your API key was successfully connected. If you don't, then make sure you verify that, get that part working. What we can also do is we can search for a model, as I mentioned in my guide. And in my guide, I mentioned to search for Llama 3.1. It's an older model, but it's good because it's small. It should fit on most GPUs and you can see it's downloading it right now. I'm going to give it time to download and then once it's done, I'll come back and then we'll test it. And then that's going to give us local model capabilities. That's using Olama. So a reoccurring theme throughout this video is that you have to be patient. Llama 3.1 finished downloading. And this is a small model, by the way. It's only 8 billion parameters. But let's go ahead and test it. I'm just going to use one of these suggested prompts. And let's see what happens. So you're going to see it kind of look, okay, never mind. Look how fast that was, right? The fact that it went that fast, I am 100% certain it is using the GPU. So if I go over this here, that was uh, 44.58 tokens per second. So obviously we've got our GPU doing its thing. If it goes super duper slow, that means that it's using the CPU or it didn't fit into the GPU and it's not working correctly. That's why I was talking about making sure that the NVIDIA GPU is set because if it is set, then it's gonna be really super fast like that. Now that we verified that Olam is working and we can run some local models and it runs super fast, Let's just quickly test our open API. So 04 mini, let's just do a quick test prompt. I'm just gonna say hello and see if it makes sure if it comes back with something. Yeah, and there it is right there. So we've got our open API connection working as well. Okay, we covered a lot in this lesson, so we're gonna stop it right here, but we now have the foundation for creating some really awesome AI-based tools for increasing our productivity. RAG, Agentic AI, Tool Use, MCP, We've got it all ready to set up with this canvas. I'm excited to show you what we can do with all this. That's going to be coming up next. Just one last thing I want to share with you before I go. Again, we set all this up in Portainer. Why did we go through all the trouble doing that? Well, you can see here we got our containers listed, and now we see Olam and Open Web UI. They're running from right here. If I select this, I can restart it, I can remove it, I can pause it, I can stop it. I have full control over it. I can also go into here and see exactly what's happening. It just gives you so much better fine control. Each one of these applications is sandboxed from each other. So if I want to stop it, it's not going to affect the other. It's completely independent. And even nicer, when we created our stack, if I go here and I go to the editor and there's an update, I can press update the stack like this, repool the images, and it's going to update them. And so if I want to update and let's say the one of these containers comes up with a new update. I literally just have to press update the stack and it's going to update it. So it's made our workflow so much better. Just doing a little bit of extra work up front is going to save us a lot of time and create a very nice system down the line. And that's how we're going to be interacting with most of our AI applications is with Docker. Not all of them, but most of them. All right, signing off.